folks, this is not a movie actor. He's Joe Goggin, a private detective who uses motion picture cameras to get the evidence. In this little picture, a serious one, by the way, we'll show you how Goggin works. Herman Tafford had been in an accident which, he claimed, had caused him to lose the use of his legs. He was suing Goggin's client for $100,000, but Herman Tafford was under suspicion. What's more, he knew he was under suspicion. For weeks, the detective had watched Tafford, who lived on a small farm. Sometimes he'd climb a tree before dawn and hide there until dark, waiting to see if the man could walk. One evening, just as he was about to leave, Tafford came out. He was in a wheelchair, as Goggin had seen him many times before. Recently, the man had discovered signs of being shadowed. He was nervous, on edge. Then... Here was something Goggin had been waiting for a long time. This man lived alone on his farm. And so the detective would now find out whether Mr. Tafford was really a cripple or whether he could get up and walk. Well, it wasn't too long before Goggin's hunch was confirmed. The guy could walk all right. There was nothing wrong with his legs. But in the darkness, Joe couldn't take movies to prove it. So that was it. A familiar con game played by a man whose record proved him to be a dangerous character. Suspicious, jittery, trigger happy. That guy was playing for keeps. A good thing for Goggin that the old goat decided he was just getting jumpy, that he thought the noise in the tree was caused by some animal. For weeks, the detective had no success at the farm. Then, at a hospital, he'd secretly arranged for some additional medical tests for Tayford. This time, he hoped to get movies that would definitely prove the man to be a fraud. Through the room's ventilator, Joe's special silent camera would have a good view of the swindler's reactions to scientific tests that should tell the story. After various examinations had proved futile, came one more test. The paths of certain nerves in the left leg were expertly charted to mark the spot where the doctor would suddenly jab a needle. If that jab caused Tafer to jump or show any sign of pain, the hidden movie camera would get the evidence the detective wanted. The raised bed sheet held by the nurse shielded the action of the doctor's hands from Tafered. Ready? The poke of a needle to settle a $100,000 stake. Now. But he didn't bat an eyelash, not even a quiver. As in all other tests, Tafed's legs showed no sense of feeling whatever. Goggin's plan was a flop. He just couldn't prove what he knew to be a fact. Then, suddenly, he remembered something. Tafed's record. He had worked many years for an oil company in India. India, yogi. He had learned self-hypnosis, complete mastery of pain, as practiced by people of the Far East. And he was now making it pay off in a big way. Back on the farm, Joe hid out for weeks, sometimes starting before dawn. Pretty monotonous work, but playing hide-and-seek with a guy who'd shoot you on sight couldn't be called boring. No pun intended. And remember, this private eye worked with a camera instead of a revolver and a turned-up raincoat collar. That phony farmer could kill him and call it a lawful act against a trespasser. If Gargan was thinking of that old gag about there's nobody in here but us chickens, it wasn't funny to him right now. <laughs> Once again, Lady Luck was on Gargan's side. One day, after more weeks of trying to catch Tafford off guard, Joe tried a new bit of strategy. In his wheelchair, the man who claimed he couldn't walk had been busy inside the house all morning. Goggin figured a fire would bring him out and make him forget his paralysis act. <laughs> Risky business. If things got out of hand before the farmer appeared, Joe would have to put the fire out and maybe stop a bullet while doing it. 
But first, he'd save that horse via the back door of the stable. Uh-huh. So far, it worked, as per plan. And Joe was ready to get the pictures as soon as he got out of that chair. But Mr. Phony Baloney wasn't getting out of that chair. He was sticking to his character. Yep, Herman Tafford had learned his part well. He was taking no chances. Well, maybe this would throw him. Now Mr. Faker was really beginning to percolate. He was on the hot spot, and that went double. What now? Some bailing wire jammed a wheel. Maybe that would do it. It looked like he'd get up. But not for long. He wouldn't get on his feet in daylight for anything. The pressure of the water in the hydrant had forced that old hose loose before. So this incident aroused no suspicion on his part. As for the fire, when he got around to thinking about it, he figured it was started by sparks from the incinerator. Joe had no way of knowing what Tafford was thinking, so he decided to stay away from the farm for a couple of months. He thought he'd give the old man plenty of time to feel he was no longer being shadowed and perhaps become careless. Then, one afternoon, the camera sleuth saw something that stepped up his pulse. The wheelchair, empty, in front of the barn door. Say, maybe this was it. The noisy irrigation pump would drown out the sound of his movements, but it also covered, directly above him, other sounds. A 200-pound bale quietly shoved into position by a desperate man. Then, a wisp of falling hay. And Joe had again missed a view of paradise. But it wasn't over yet. Tafford had seen that camera pointing right at him. And he knew what that meant. As for Goggin, well, he had the pictures. He'd taken long chances before, and now, maybe, somehow, he'd find a way out. Herman Tafford's record showed he had beaten two murder raps in his time. Joe knew he wouldn't hesitate to try again if he was pressed, so Joe wasn't pressing. Now, after all those long months of work and danger, the precious evidence completely destroyed. That old coot packed a wallop. He'd rather have perforated Joe's skin with his 38, but he knew that wasn't necessary. First, there were no witnesses to anything Goggin might say about this. Second, the photographic evidence was gone. Later, he'd even get rid of the metal film spool now in the incinerator. And third, the medical tests were all in his favor. It looked like Goggin was licked, and the big day in court only a week off. At the trial, Tafford played for sympathy. That hundred grand was coming closer and closer. In view of all the evidence, the judge couldn't help but be impressed. Yep, it looked like his case was in the bag. But Joe Goggin had something in the bag, too. A movie projector. But how come? Did Joe have some pictures to show the court after all? Well, let's go back to the day he drove away from the farm with a gun pointed in his direction. Goggin's car was not running too smoothly. Then it jerked to a sudden stop. But the camera sleuth had purposely stalled it. You got it, a lens in the button of the car door. On the other side, a movie camera aimed at Tafford and started by a button on the dashboard. And now here's the piece of film shown in the courtroom. It exposed Tafford's fake paralysis once and for all. A mighty tough case in the career of Joe Goggin was licked. This film by the private investigator who worked with movie cameras led to a criminal suit that finally put Herman Tafford behind the bars for attempted fraud. Yeah.